am Randy Versada. Let's do business for God. Pray along with me. <laughs> there is information on the bottom of your screen or somewhere on the screen that tells you how to sow seed and we believe God with you along for your harvest. Now, it's important that you sow seed. Now I'm going to play with you a little bit. You see the big moth holes in the, in the side of my jacket? Now, you don't want your preacher coming on screen looking like he's he doesn't have enough. You know, the guy's got moth holes in his coat. Now I'm playing with you a bit. <laughs> Those of you that haven't supported this, my ministry, get off your butt and send me some money. How's that plain enough for you? Support this ministry. Uh, I believe God with you for your harvest, harvest, harvest when you sow when you sow seed into this ministry. Okay? Now I'm going to get rid of this coat. Thanks. Okay, let's continue doing business for God. In the last months, I have called forth Elijah's. I've said that continuously. Elijah's, come forth. Come forth from your your cave, your your penthouse, your outhouse, wherever you are. Elijah's, come forth. Okay. Elijah's, come forth. Don't be shy. Don't be afraid. Don't be intimidated by the devil's suggestions and lies. Elijah's, I'm talking to you. Hey, Elijah's, come forth now. Come forth. Come on to the scene of God. Come on to the scene. Come out onto the scene of the things of God. Show your stuff. You've killed the lion and the tiger and the bear in your times past. You've defeated things like debt. Uh, things of that nature. Come forth now and show your stuff. The word talks about, uh, and don't choke when I say this, the word specifically says, God will make you famous. I didn't make that up. God says in his word, I will make you famous. I'm not saying that you're a fame hound. The word simply says, God will make you famous. It comes with the package of God. That's just, it comes with the package. So don't shy from that. And, and don't get over, uh, don't get humble-itis. Oh, oh, I'm so humble, I'm so humble. Leave, leave that off the table for a while, will you? We know you're already trained in being humble. You don't have to make a big, broad display of it. We already know you're trained. You're steeped. God has spoke to you about what being humble means. <clears throat> Elijah, come forth now. Come forth. I had a meeting with a man of God in the last two weeks, actually two meetings. And 
God had spoke to me in my private time with him. We have been praying for quite some time about platforms. And I, as I've said before, I don't know everything, but I know the guy who does. He's called Jesus Christ. He's got the Holy Ghost with him. Like I said, I don't know everything, but he does, and I'm buddies with him. Jesus spoke to me as I walked out of my hotel room in Tampa, Florida one day, and he said to me, thank you for being my friend. So I know the one who does have the answers, who knows, uh, like the sons of Issachar, he knows what to do. That big word, D-O, that's a huge word, so to speak. If you know what to do, you're the star of the show. You know what to do, I'm telling you. You show your stuff, Elijah's. You know what to do. I'm telling you, God will make you famous, whether you, whether you like that or not. So we've been, we've been talking to the Lord for some time about platforms. Platforms. Now, I have experience <clears throat> with and experience about putting pressure on God. Brother Andy, you think you can put pressure on God? Sweetheart, anybody that has faith, you can put pressure on God. And you use your faith you believe God that you can get through to him, that you are capable of talking to him. Your faith gets through to him. You have to think that way. <clears throat> That's why you hear me say, I'm God's favorite child. Everybody should say that. Um, now, I have the faith to believe that I'm God's favorite child, that I, I can move the hand of God, and I do move the hand of God. And I intend on doing a lot more of it. <clears throat> When I'm calling forth Elijah's, be encouraged by this. I'm calling you forth in faith that I believe that you are there. Do you understand? I've already got my faith latched onto you. I'm already believing for you, Elijah, to come forth from your various locations, from your various stratas of whatever. I already have my faith on that. Jesus has his faith on that. Did you know that Jesus prayed for the apostles, which is the church? He prayed that the Faith would fail not. <laughs> Praise God. Get that into you. Jesus prayed for the church, the very earliest beginning church, and said, I pray that their faith does not fail. That's us. So look who's back in your play. Praise God. <laughs> Oh, I got a million things I want to tell you today. Hallelujah. More than a million. Hmm. Elijah. Elijah's come forth. Elijah's come forth. <clears throat> Our prayer moves the hand of God. Like it says in the word, concerning the works of my hands, command ye me. I know we've talked about this before. It's good to hear it all the time. Concerning the works of my hands, <coughs> command ye me. So he's already talking there about you with your faith moving the hand of God. Moving the hand of God. We've already seen this. 
we have experience at doing this already. Uh, you know, I mentioned about uh, the Elijahs. You've already killed the lion, the tiger, and the bear, so you've already, you've already got a repertoire behind you. You've got a resume that you can throw out on the table and say, Lord, well, you know, I did thus and so, and da 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 He's not going to argue with you. He's never going to put you down. He's going to put you up. You hang around God, you'll get a great big dose of encouragement. Just buckets. Encouragement. Thrown on you. Thrown on you. <clears throat> so we've been talking, I'm going to say I, I've been talking to God about platforms. You know, and I'll say to him, talk to me about platforms. I sure don't know everything. And I'm new to a lot of things. So, talk to me about platforms. He gave me, you know, the Holy Spirit, he's called the Comforter, the one that comes alongside you to help you out. And recently, he came alongside me like that. And it'd be like your dad putting his arm around you and saying, hey, I want to talk to you about thus and so. And when he talks to you about thus and so, all of a sudden, the fog clears and you, you have a clear insight or insights into whatever you're asking him about. Now, this is pretty remarkable. Uh, like I said, I have experience about with putting pressure on God with my faith. You can put pressure on God with your faith. Oh, yeah, watch me. Hang around with me for a while and find out. The, the pressure starts where you build your faith and then you present to the Father in the name of Jesus. Now, you just turned the key when you said in the name of Jesus, you know. You just turned the key to the vault. Now you, you, have, you have access and the vault opens. You have moved the hand of God. Now, that a lot of people got light bulbs went on right there. Moving the hand of God. Remember that. Let that come back to your thinking. Hmm, moving the hand of God. Moving the hand of God. Me, that's got to be one of my favorite phrases. <clears throat> moving the hand of God. Moving the hand of God. So I've been putting pressure on God concerning platforms. You know, I would ask him about platforms from this angle. I have a lot of business experience. So I will pull onto the table, so to speak, uh, from my business experience and see how that works in the arena of faith and in the things of God. You know, so I'm, kind of, I'm sort of saying, uh, Lord, how can I use this experience in this thing that I'm doing now with you? So I've been putting pressure on the Father in the name of Jesus. Uh, I want you to get used to that phrase, putting pressure on the Father in the name of Jesus, using the name of Jesus. When I first got saved, I would literally pray this. I would, I would ask for something, and then I would say to the Father, I said this all the time. Now, this, this is the prayer of a very young Christian, but I said this all the time. Father, how can you resist me in the name of Jesus? And then I would laugh. I would say, you can't resist me. Mm -mm -mm, no, you can't. No, you can't. You cannot resist me when I ask you in the name of Jesus. That was a baby Christian praying that prayer, and it worked all the time. Of course, I learned more, but we don't have to make a big story out of that. So in the last, oh, maybe something like two weeks or something, 
uh, I knew that I have been putting pressure on the Father concerning platforms. Show me how that works. Teach me about platforms. Show me the ins and outs. Show me everything about it. Uh, whenever, whenever I've endeavored to learn to do something, I always did my due diligence first, and I really researched the thing. I started a business one time, and my dad was in fear and trepidation about me starting this business. And one of my very best friends was in the room one day when that subject came up. And that good friend of mine had seen with his own eyes, he'd been around enough, around me enough to see what I had done for due diligence to research everything about this business so that when I, the day I went into the business, it was a success. And he spoke to my father across the room and he said, John, I have seen what he has done, all the research, all the background stuff and everything, you can rest assured, he knows what he's doing. So I'm asking the Father and I'm asking the Holy Spirit, you know, show me all these ins and outs. Well, you know, when you put pressure on the Father, you present your case in the court of heaven with your words, with your faith. I should have said faith first. First, with your faith, with your words, with your faith that you have built in the word. Now you have faith to present that thing to the Father. Now he can recognize it. He has the ability to recognize it because it's charged with his word. A bunch of light bulbs went on right there. And I could say it like this, about a week ago, I'm sitting at my desk and the Holy Spirit shows up right beside me, did not physically see him, Holy Spirit's right beside me. I'm going to, I'm going to relate it as best I can. <coughs> So, you might say the title of when he showed up was uh, You've Been Asking Me About Platforms. And then uh, he starts, um, I'm going to say it like this. It's kind of usual procedure with me the way the Holy Spirit deals with me is he will stand beside me and I don't hear speech but an impression just comes through me and that impression has images um, you could it's not accurate but you, you could say it feels like Dialogue or communi communication would be a better word. <clears throat> but it's, it's more of when he comes close to you, whatever he's carrying, it just transfers into you. Maybe that's a better way to say that. And maybe someday I should sit down and really come up with an exact description of what I'm talking about and really nail it. So I get this distinct impression it's like a transference from him. And you could say, and then he, 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 you know, by conveying this to me, I simply understood. I saw, you've heard me use the, 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 the phrase, I had a knowing. And a, a, a knowing is where one moment you're, you're thinking about something and, you know, you're considering the different options. But when the Holy Spirit shows up, the knowing just goes, Mm, right India. <laughs> That's different. You've considered it and all, you know, done all your homework, so to speak. But when he shows up, man, he shows up with the goods. 
and it just transfers into you, and you got it. This is really simple. So don't look for a seven-step formula and things like that. This is so simple. Uh, oh, this is so simple. Remember now, we've been praying about platforms, putting pressure on about platforms, not to get lost in our talk here. He said to me, platforms, platforms. Imagine him saying <coughs> to you, platforms? You want platforms? Look over here. Without saying the word look over here, I see him go like this, which means look over here. So I, I looked in that direction in my mind's eye, and I saw what we would call a warehouse in heaven. And this warehouse was stacked with platforms. And this warehouse was huge. If you know what a dirigible is, it's one of those gas field things, you know, like they use them, uh, the army used them in the old days, probably, probably maybe still now, but they use it at a football game. And it's that, it's that huge gas field thing, contraption. Uh, it's not an airplane. Uh, but anyway, and they have to park them in a hangar and they have their own kind of hangar. I've seen lots of hangars and hangars are big. But the hangers for those things, first of all, they got to be like 90 feet tall. They got to be 300 feet long. And they can't land them in the hangar like that because the bottom would scrape on the concrete. So they cut, they have to come in kind of high. And then when they get in there, they got to have lots of ceiling above them for their fastening device. So the hangar that they go into, I mean, the thing's like a mountain. It's huge. And I saw this warehouse and it reminded me of that of one of those hangers hot air balloon is that the right word a zeppelin not a lead zeppelin a zeppelin <clears throat> like the hindenburg um but this warehouse it reminded me of this hanger and these i remember now we're, we're praying about platforms and talking about platforms and i looked into that hanger or this excuse me warehouse which looks like this massive hangar. And there's all these platforms stacked in there. And they're stacked really high. It's almost like... The number of them and the size of them was really over the top. You would look at it and say, well, you know, the warehouse for the platforms wouldn't have to be that big. But look at this thing. You know, it's, it's got to go up 200 feet in the air. Why? Whoa, 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 whoa. What's with that? And the, and the reply in the spirit that I perceived on that was, well, platforms are important. We haven't necessarily recognized how important they are. And what a grand function that they perform. A platform is a very, uh, that's a, it's a very remarkable thing. We could talk about that for a long time, but I'm not going to. And these platforms that I saw, it looked like they were all made out of uh, aluminum or something. They were quite fancy. Maybe they were made out of something like a magnesium, which is aluminum's really light, magnesium's really light, and then there's other stuff that's light too. But nice and, uh, they were shiny, you know, like aluminum and stainless steel or something like that. <clears throat> very nice looking. Um, you, you would look at it and say, wow, a lot of skill went into that thing. That's, that's very elaborate. Okay. So he'd said, platforms? You want platforms? And he went like that. And I saw this massive warehouse with platforms. And this warehouse, I don't know how far back it went. That warehouse might have been five miles long, maybe more. I don't know. It was, it was massive, full of platforms. I noticed that. 
there wasn't a small stack of platforms. This thing was fully stocked. There was platforms to the ceiling, all the way to the ceiling and all the way to the outsides. That's how many platforms I saw in there. Does that tell you anything? Come on, come on. Platforms? You want platforms? You know, I can still see, but platforms? You want platforms? You know, he points over there. It's almost like, no, I won't say that. None of them pushed to get to the heat that I got that I got to shit. None of them, none of them, again. Okay, so you might say that I, I could say, okay, okay, I got it. I see that, and I could tell by your tone that you're really saying, well, yeah, you want a platform? Oh, look at there. Kind of driving the point home strongly. So I'm absorbing that, and I sort of bring my looking back to the Holy Spirit who is addressing my prayer about platforms. I'll remind you of this in the Word. The Word specifically says that when we pray and we receive what we prayed for, don't forget this. This is hooked onto that scripture. And when we receive what we pray for, our joy is made full. Don't forget that part of it. That's hooked onto the back of what I just said every time. You pray for something, you receive it, <laughs> your joy is made full. Hallelujah. Oh, no, this is this good preaching. Somebody, somebody yell and say, yeah, Brother Randy, this is good preaching. <clears throat> okay, now I'm going to go on to something further in this. <clears throat> and then I got this impression from him, or you, you might say that he said this to me. Platforms, platforms, platforms. God is not withholding platforms. And then I could say it like this. Get this straight. God's not withholding platforms. It's not Him. Where's your faith? What can you believe for? Where's your faith? What can you believe for? Platforms, platforms, platforms. God is not withholding platforms. You know. Get a load of this. Mighty works with notoriety generates platforms. Mighty works with notoriety generate platforms. Mighty works with notoriety generate platforms. Mighty works with notoriety generate platforms. So let's let's display some examples. Mighty works with notoriety generate platforms. So I'm going to mention Elijah at Mount Carmel. We've talked about this enough times that we're familiar with it, but you go back to it after this video on your time. Elijah, God performed a tremendous manifestation of his power on Mount Carmel through using Elijah. That He was his man. And when the display of God's power and all of that happened, it generated tremendous, tremendous notoriety. 
one of the things that happened there was fire came down from the sky and consumed the offering on the altar, consumed the altar and the stones around it and the trench that was full of water. It licked up the water in the trench. Now, my perception of that is there may have been when all of this fire hit, there may have been at the end of that just a big hole in the ground. That wouldn't surprise me. And a lot of people were there. <clears throat> my memory of, of that instance is there was hundreds of people there. Hundreds. That generated tremendous notoriety. Elijah, if he had no notoriety before that, zero, this alone generated a tremendous amount of notoriety. Anybody that's got some smarts is going to figure it out, figure this out, that the glory and the credit and the acknowledgement of all of this, it goes back to God. Not Elijah, of course, but that goes back to God. That's one example. A performance of a mighty work generated a platform. Now, on that day, Elijah from that time forward, he'd done other things before that, but we're not talking about that. We'll just talk about this one right here, right now. That notoriety created a platform for him. Okay, I'm going to go to somebody else. There was a couple named Ananias and Sapphira, and they had offended the Holy Spirit. And the apostle called them on this wrong that they had done. He called them on it. And uh, the man and the wife both dropped dead as a result of this. And it says that when that happened, great fear fell on the people. You see notoriety has showed up again. Two people drop dead in front of the apostle. Thump, thump. Great notoriety goes, you know, whoosh, out amongst the people. Peter was in prison. I want to read this account. Okay, this is Acts chapter 12. I'm going to go to verse 6. And when Herod would have brought him forth, the same night Peter was sleeping between two soldiers, bound with two chains, and the keepers before the door, they kept the prison. And behold, the angel of the Lord came upon him, and a light shined in the prison. And he, and he smote Peter. He shook him like bounced off. Hey, wake up. Smote Peter on the side and raised him up saying, Arise, up quickly. And his chains fell off from his hands. And the angel said unto him, Gird thyself and bind on thy sandals. And so he did. And he said unto him, Cast thy garment about thee, get dressed, and follow me. And he went out and followed him. And wist not that that it was true which was done by the angel, but thought he saw a vision. You might say, <clears throat> Peter was half asleep. That's reasonable. When they were past the first and the second ward, I'm going to say that that was, uh, you know, sections of the prison, you know, section one, section two, section three, whatever. They came unto the iron gate, that leadeth into, unto the city, which opened to them of its own accord. Now I want you to notice that. They came to this gate, this iron gate, 
which opened to them of its own accord. An unseen something, someone, opened that gate right in front of their face. And they went out and passed on through one street, and forthwith the angel departed from him. The saints had been praying for Peter, and they prayed him out of there to the house where they were praying. And when they finally realized, he's standing there. Of course, a big ripple went whoosh through the people again. Notoriety exploded. Notoriety exploded amongst those that heard of it and knew of it. Now remember what I read. Mighty works with notoriety generates platforms. Now Peter's platform increased greatly due to all of this notoriety. Now this guy's got, in our, in our culture we will say, wow, that guy got real uh, notoriety, credibility. Ooh, hey, everybody send money to Peter, to his ministry. Uh, he's credible. Da 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 da. You know, notoriety, notoriety. He's got a platform now. Let's support his platform. Platforms. 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 So I've been praying to God and talking to him about platforms. And I just read some examples. And I'm gonna I'm gonna say this one. I think I said it on my last one of my last most recent videos. There is uh, there was this uh, trucker's convoy, and there's been these uh, four guys, four people that have been thrown in jail out west, Canada. It's been in there for months, and when I think of them. In jail I think of Peter in jail and Peter was delivered supernaturally in jail from the jail his chains fell off doors opened all by themselves now here's the challenge to the body of Christ. Those believers in Peter's day, they prayed him out of that jail. So believers today, you pray those people out of that jail. You want a platform? Pray those people out of that jail. Here's another example. Lester Summerall goes to the Philippines. When he gets there, the people there tell him there's a demon-possessed girl. She's tied, chained to a tree, tied to a tree. So he goes to see this girl. She's they called her the, the girl bitten by demons. And Lester said, <clears throat> he said, you could walk up to that girl. And he said, you could, you could see on her arm a bite mark would appear on her skin. She was bitten by an invisible thing. She was bitten by demons, and they were manifesting right into the natural realm. He said, you could see the bite marks, you know, like a, how the, you know, bite mark is, you know, like two C's like that. 
somebody's teeth. You could see that girl being bitten. It's terrible. She was, what she was experiencing was, uh, shouldn't happen to anybody. And he commanded that thing to leave and, and he got her delivered. Well, if my memory serves me correct, the mayor of Manila, or the governor of the country or somebody, but anyway, I think it was the mayor of Manila, gave Lester the keys to the city. And the general flavor of the way I heard in the testimony was, man, Lester, he owned that place, as a phrase. Do you understand what I'm saying? Man, he owned the place. That event of that girl being delivered Bang, he's got a platform. He's got a platform. <clears throat> Events like that, um, something like that, something like that guy, those guys out west being delivered supernaturally, that's a, that's a platform of notoriety, I'm telling you. Oh, well, you know, as if God would... As, as if that would happen today in modern times. Don't, don't hang me that hogwash. You think God can't crack the walls open with that place and not, not by using some mechanical means? <laughs> yeah, God can. God can. Just get the unbelief out of the way. Get yourself some good Old Testament and New Testament faith Imagine, get quiet before God and imagine those people being set free. Remember the Tower of Babel? It was said, hey, anything they can imagine, they can do it. They can have it. Anything they can imagine. You mean to tell me, Brother Andy, that I can imagine things into uh, manifestation? Yeah, it's happening every day. 